or when, if or when they believe that Jesus comes back. Most of them don't believe that Jesus is coming back. And not only that, some will go so far as to say, when we die, everything goes black. A lot of people will say, well, the world's coming to an end, but they will not identify Christ as coming together and sewing it all up. They will just say, oh, the world's going to come to an end because it's going to be a big nuclear war and all these things. But God loves us too much as the church to let us walk into a disaster without knowing. The Bible says that uh, warning comes before what? Destruction. So God is not unrighteous to where he would just let something happen to you without giving you some type of warning. He lets people know. But what is the problem with the warning? Most people don't even heed the warning. I mean, people all around. Like, perfect example of this. I got a warning one time. Whole summer, people kept telling me, Kev, wear your helmet. I ride a motorcycle. Kev, you need to wear your helmet. I saw this person coming to the emergency room, head busted open. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Thanks a lot for the warning. Most people just take it like that. One day, I'm leaving Bible study, all joyful and peaceful, get on my bike, riding down Martin Luther King Street. All of a sudden, a lady out of nowhere comes hard across me, cuts me up, I make a hard left-hand turn, flip off the bike. Before I knew it, I was rolling around, break dancing, going down Martin Luther King, spinning on my back, looking at the sky, the wall, the ground, the sky, motorcycle. I mean, it looked like a cameraman had fell, and all you saw was just everything spinning around. And all I could think of was, why didn't I wear a helmet? Why didn't I wear a helmet? Because in my mind, I thought that when it happened, I would be quick enough to escape the judgment. I would be smooth enough to zig out the way. I'd be able to make a quick reflex. Oh, that was a close one. But in reality, it happened so quick, I didn't even have a chance to make a decision. And this is what's going to happen when the Lord comes back. It's going to happen so quick that people will not have a chance to go, wait, hold just like that. It will happen. So we're going to be talking about this. First of all, what is a prophecy? A prophecy it is the God-given insight of what is to come. God speaks it through his prophets. He speaks it in the word of God. Now, why does he give his prophets this insight? That is, of course, to warn us. The prophet's objective was to write what God said will happen in the future, and then these things will come to pass. All of the prophecies have come to pass with the exception of a few that is to come very soon. All right, if you look up there, 30% of the scriptures are dedicated to prophecies. So they're not something that you can overlook in the Bible. It's not like, man, we can just bypass all the prophecies. The prophecies actually mean something. Prophecies show us that God keeps his word and his promise. It also shows us that the Bible is true because everything that it predicts comes to pass. So yes, bring on the Quran if you want. The Quran does not prophesy stuff and it all comes to pass. Only the Bible does that. Bring on whatever book you want to bring on. Bring on Nostradamus. It doesn't matter. That man was wrong. Some of his prophecies were way off the mark. And as a prophet of God, if you were wrong one time, you were killed in the Old Testament, so there was no room for error. Come on now. So the Bible is 100% accurate. What makes us think that the stuff that the Bible said was going to happen hundreds and thousands of years ago that happened, what makes us think the stuff that he says is going to happen in the last days aren't going to happen? That would be equivalent to me calling out about 20 prophecies and every single one comes to pass and all of a sudden you just for whatever reason say, I don't believe this next one's going to happen. After I've been dead on the money for 20 times straight, most likely you're going to put your money on it like, yeah, I believe it. That brother is on point. So here we have it. Exodus, look at this. Example, the Old Testament features more than 100 prophecies regarding the coming of the Messiah to the earth. Through these prophecies, we know that Jesus was truly the Messiah, for he fulfilled every one of them. Amen. In the Old Testament, it shows us the coming of the Messiah. Everything he would do, all the miracles that he would work. It says that the blind eyes should be opened and the deaf ears should hear and the lame should leap like a heart. It says when he came that he will tread on the waves of the sea. All of these things he did. So if he wasn't the Savior, he should have won an Oscar for acting like the Savior because he did everything that the Old Testament said the Savior would do. So now, if he came and did all these things, and those prophecies came true, now the ones that he speaks of that will come true in our day and age will come to pass. So, let's go on. Look at Isaiah 53. For surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he 
was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Here's Isaiah prophesying what the Savior would do. Tell me, is this not an accurate description of the Savior? He came, he took on our sins, our transgressions, and look what it says here. It says, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. What does that mean? We were about to get a big fat whooping by God. Yeah. Only reason we have peace with the Savior is because of Jesus Christ. On, it wasn't for his peace. He already has peace. He is peace. Amen. It was for our peace. So in order for us to have peace with God, he had to come and take on our burdens. He had to come and take on our sin. And then it says, all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. Sounds like the Savior. Sounds like humanity. Humanity has a problem. The problem with humanity is we want to do things our way. Yeah. We are dumb even though we think we are smart. God tells us, don't do it. Don't go there. Stay out of this. Don't touch that. Leave him alone. Leave her alone. Break up with him. Break up with her. Don't smoke this. Don't drink that. All of these things he tells us to do for our own good, and it goes, whoop, whoop, and right out the other side. Why? Because we, like sheep, want to do our own thing. If you look at the nature of a sheep, they go astray, and it is up to the sheep herder to go out and get them, because as soon as they walk off, guess what's in the bushes waiting? The wolf. So the sheep herder has to make sure that he protects the sheep. This prophecy, of course, was fulfilled. Look at Isaiah 35. Thank you very much. The lovely Melita is back, everyone. She's back. Last week she took a break. Who was uh, on the wheels of steel last week? So, so. so Cena? All right. So Melita's back. It's good to see you all. All right. I feel like Pat Sajak and Vanna. All right. So look at this. Isaiah 35. Four and five. I don't like get distracted. So. All right, keep me on task. It says there, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with the recompense. He will come and save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Jesus fulfilled all of these Old Testament prophecies. These are just a few of the predicted hundreds of years prior to his arrival on earth. So now... I don't know about you, but in the Bible, it records tons of people whose eyes were open, ears were open. Now, this is the awesome thing about that prophecy right there. It's not just talking about your physical eyes and ears. This is also talking about your spiritual eyes and ears. Because if God doesn't open up your eyes, you can never see the kingdom of God. You will not see that God is present with us right here as we speak. You will not be able to hear God's voice. You will not be able to feel the presence of God if he does not open up your eyes to see what the naked eye cannot see. So that's what he does. He opens up our eyes, opens up our ears to hear. Look at this. Prophecies challenge us to do three things. Live holy, for one, knowing that God's word is true and the events in the Bible will come to pass. I don't know about you, but it makes me say I'm going to fight a little harder to stay in the church yeah, when on. I know it's all about to get wrapped up. That's right. When I do want to go off and chill and do whatever I want to do, I said, wait a minute. It would be a horrible thing to be out there in the middle of kicking, having a good time, take a break. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they're going to trumpet. And I'm sitting there on the desk, no boogie, getting my boogie. That would be a horrible thing. It would be a horrible thing to make a decision that I'm going to backslide this week. And that week, the Lord comes back. Come on, now. It would be a horrible thing to just give in to unholy living. In other words, to say, I ain't going to even fight no more. I ain't going to even try. I'm going to live like this is the last day I got to live. I'm going to have a good old time and go out like a G. And the Lord comes back. So it makes the church say, man, he's coming soon. Now, I know grandma been saying it for years. You heard people say it, and people mock us, and they laugh at us and say, you know what y'all been saying? That Jesus was coming back for over 2,000 years. I ain't seen that. And all of that stuff. But the fact of the matter is something about the Christian deep down on the inside knows that he is returning soon. Amen. Something in your gut. You can feel it in the atmosphere that something just ain't right. You can sense it. You can pick up on it if you got your spiritual ears open and your spiritual 